Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my themed solo run of this week's featured Nightfall as on Master and as the Lightblade. And the theme for this week is Destiny 1. All the weapons I'm using have been brought forward from D1. Now I'm not including the raid, just weapons that have been brought forward into the sandbox. So we're using Hunjury, which in D1 was the Dead Orbit Scout Rifle, Palindrome, which in D1 was the Crucible Vendor Hand Cannon, and Queen Breaker, which in D1 was actually called Queen Queen's Breaker Bow. Uh, and it came in as part of the, the, the House of Wolves DLC. You had this, Lord of Wolves, and Dreg's Promise. They were all exotics that you could get from Prison of Elders, which was a three-player kind of a seasonal activity it was maybe the blueprint for the seasonal activities all the mods i'm using are on the screen you can pause the video and go through them bit by bit uh, i'm using a couple of arc chargeable light mods which i've now found out that if you put two, at least two arc chargeable light mods on you don't need to have an arc mod on to activate them because they activate each other kind of cool piece of information there but another cool thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you uh, kind of a little trick to get past the lantern section in the Haunted Forest really quickly. So we're going to set that up right from the start of the video. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to run all the way back until I see Fluorescent Canal, which is the public patrol area kind of attached to the Queen's Bailey. So, and it's at this doorway, so I, I'm just going to get my sparrow out and I'm going to take it down here. Now... Some some of you watching the video, some of you guys watching the video will have seen this being done, but I, I, I've seen it being done in the fire teams, but I've never seen it being done solo. So not saying it hasn't been done solo, I'm just going to show you from a solo player's perspective how easy it is to get this thing to work. So I just park it over there and forget about it. Now we're going back on with the strike. So to get Lightblade to go, I put two crits on him with the Queen, Queen Breaker and then... Uh, a couple with hung jury and that makes them go now what happened here with the barrier knight doesn't normally happen what's going to happen here is normally what happens normally what happens is you do a crit a crit and a body and then you've got to break his shield once you break his shield he should be finishable and that gets us a bit of heavy we want to go in with as much heavy as we can it'll normally be somewhere between 18 19 something like that but if that champion drops two bricks then you'll go in with a full complement if not it'll be anywhere between 16 and 19. when i killed this barrier champion here i went back up and i looked to the right because normally the other barrier champions stand in there waiting to be killed and, and i'll do exactly what i've done in the middle i'll put three shots on him and he's dead if he's not where i was looking from to start with then sometimes he's under the bridge but there he was right in the center so this for me this room and i'm going to talk a little bit while i'm killing these tr the kind of trash mobs you'll see there queen's breaker what it does is it's eaten through the shield but uh it's blind it blinds smaller adds it blinds bigger adds you'll see the difference bigger adds it uh it's it kind of staggers like it's an unstoppable and that's what allows me to three three pop the champions you'll see me do it here the first one just stuns them and it kind of stops his ability to be able to put his shield up so I then I can put three shots on him and kill him. This room for me is probably the most frustrating because there's so much going on here. When you come in, you've got those two wizards, and you've got a light bearer, and you've got two barrier champions. Once you clear them out, you've got a whole bunch of acolytes. Once you clear a lot of them out, say 80% of them, you're then going to get another light bearer with a whole bunch of thrall. And once you clear the light bearer and then the thrall, you're then going to get another light bearer. But you're also going to get two light bearers, disciples, and a whole bunch of thrall and some acolytes. There is a lot going on in this little room. And trust me, it's not a big enough room to have all that going on. So let's break it down. What I do is I take the two wizards out. I, I save my grenade for the second wizard, just in case a lucent moth attaches itself to it. I take out the first wizard. If I need to finish, I'll get a finish because one of the fragments I've got on is I get I, I go invisible when I finish. Uh, second wizard hit with a queen's breaker, which blinds it, and then put a grenade down. So and I put it down close, you know, in between, right, right below where we are now. So if the wizard tries to get in here and hide, which they do sometimes, they'll come right against the edge here to hide. She's sitting in the grenade, which is eating our shield away. 
and then I go after one of the champions. Now the way that the champions in the Lucent Hive in here kind of work is when you go to one side, you see I've been coming to the right side quite a bit. So this barrier will have teleported over here, right? Most of the time, the two barriers stay in the center because I don't come over here very often and do very much, you know, I don't do a lot of killing. The Lucent Hive, the way I do it, the Lucent Hive is always on the right, the first one. So we take that Lucent Hive out. We Obviously, we take the barrier in the mid first. If the Lucent Hive pops his super, make sure you're in a decent bit of cover. Then we take the second champion. We've already took the first one. Then we take the second one, finish to get some heavy. Now we're trying to thin the rest of these guys out to get second light bearer, right? Now you can see there, two... I, 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 uh, I put, put my Mobius Quiver on them, two shots, got them finishable. Sometimes it just kills them outright. But then the whole bunch of Thrall come up and got tethered. I had a grenade ready. So I could finish the Lucent Hive without uh, all those uh, Thrall trying to give me a back rub. Uh, now what we're going to do is, some of these acolytes will have encroached. We need to kill the ones that push us. Now you'll see them all marked on the your, your mini map. We need to kill those to bring the second group adds down, which will spawn down in the middle. So what I try to do is get a shot on one of the disciples, which takes stuns a few of the adds. But I'm more interested in killing the light bearer right so we've got the kill on them there that was a little bit extravagant having to do the jump shot normally I, I, I've gotten finishable before then so now what I'm gonna do you see that exploding the shields kill all the all the you know 90% of the thrall around and then we'll kill this one and there'll be a couple of these acolytes left so I always try and take the lucent the lucent hive now because I've been testing this now for about two days. I've beat it quite a few times. And there's a lot of it that's repeatable. And there's a lot of it that just happens off the cuff. Right? So, now when you've cleared this room. Now we re-engage the spiral. We go back. All the adds in the first area will have despawned. We're going to get the spiral. And we're going to bring it up to its second location. After its second location. We will put it in its final location. Until we get it until we get to the uh, the lantern section. So we'll just go up here. Th this is made possible, and I'm, you know, OG D2 players will know that when you got off a sparrow before, they used to despawn, and then something happened in Beyond Light, and the sparrow stopped despawning. Pretty good, because now you can do this. And we never thought it was good. We thought it was quite, you know, we thought it was a glitch. So we're going to go all the way down here, and there's two more champions coming up. We're going to park the Sparrow in such a location that this, if I choose... And I am going to go for one of the champions from ground level. They will be shooting at me. I'm going to put it in such a location that the champions can't hit it. Because you will see... I'm going to put this out as like a... I'm going to do... I've got another clip of me doing this... Uh, so I'm going to put that out as its own video, and you'll see, if you do watch the other one, it's only going to be like a minute or two long. Uh, you'll see that the other one, in this video, I think the sparrow goes on fire before we get to the lanterns, but it, it's no problem. Uh, in the other one, it doesn't. So you'll see, and I'll explain why in this video, why it done that. So I killed the first champion outright, three shots. Now I need to finish this one, and I need to finish in the direction that I want the heavy to go in, because I don't want it going off the edge. Once we kill this, because there's uh, a champion left, champion right, acolyte left, acolyte right. Once you kill them, then we go and get the sparrow. And the final place we're going to put the sparrow is on the hive tomb ship. It is going to stay there for the whole tomb, tomb ship ride. And uh, I think one of the acolytes' uh, fire bombs hit it and do hefty damage to it. And the reason for that is. I think I can't. I, obviously, I'm not going to turn around. I don't think my character's going to turn around. I think actually it, it was it was too close to me. I think it's where you want where you want this uh, sparrow is about two thirds, a quarter of the way up, nearly at the bottom, but not quite at the bottom. 
The other thing about Queen's Breaker, obviously, it stuns, stuns and blinds. It does it with Shriekers as well. So it gives you a chance to clear out the Acolytes. Now we'll just kill it. And we'll get off the ship. And this was my plan, to get off the ship before any of the ads started shooting me. Because, it, you know, they're shooting at me. But the tomb ship's still moving. So whatever they shoot, it's going to hit behind me. So, stands to reason, it's probably going to hit the spiral. And I, I got off there because a couple, when I was testing this, uh, it seemed like if it was all the way at the back, uh, if, if the spiral was all the way at the back, then they, them throwing bombs at me from there would hit the spiral. And a couple of times they blew it up. And from what I'm noticing, I think the spiral's too much to one side. It needs to be in the middle to not get hit. I think it was too close to one side and it might have took a couple of hits there. So that's that's that done. You can see there, yeah, it's not in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back. See that line? I'm going to stand right in the center of that line, back up and sit inside here. Now I can have a relaxing, enjoyable ride without having to do anything else. Now, when you get to the, I think it's the second to the last bridge, once you get past it, just because of the frames and the animation, you will stop and the tomb ship will keep going. You'll stay in your, you'll stay in your emote. So once we get past this bridge, you'll see as soon as it disappears, it's like three, two, one, bang. At the same time, every time, now you don't need invis, so you can just, if you're facing in the direction, like as if you're still in the emote, as soon as you see yourself come away from the back, just back up and put the emote back down. And you'll sit back in there, nothing's going to shoot at you. Yeah, I think, I think actually the problem with the spiral was it was too far at the back, and that's why it was getting hit. Yeah, kind of, you want it up a bit more than that, almost in the middle, but... If you do watch that short video I'm going to put out, probably, it'll probably be out before this one, uh, you'll see exactly where you should put the spiral. I think it was just, it may actually, because from here it looks like it's in the right place. It might have just been unfortunate that one of the, the bombs hit it, one of the solar grenades hit it. So, if you're at this point, and you want to keep, you've brought your spiral this far, do not fire your super because when your super tethers these and then you get all the explosions going, it will destroy your spiral. So I decided not I decided to eat not eat, not use my hung jury because uh it's got explosive rounds because after seeing what the super done to it, I was kinda in my head, I was like, Well what else can damage it? I'm not gonna take the chance of coming this far and then the hung jury spoiling my fun. Uh which makes a bit of <laughs> <laughs> which uh, would be quite strange since uh, Bungie have destroyed my fun by taking the hung jury out. <laughs> uh, but, uh, right, so we've got here, you can leave your spiral and get on the spiral once the tomb ship stops, but I'm not too sure how long the tomb ship lasts. It will disappear eventually. So if you get on it now, you can see I keep moving backwards. That's because in the way the game is, uh, you're sitting on a spiral that's not moving. It's the tomb ship that's moving. So you'll see there what I done was I boosted off. You don't have to boost off. You just drive off. And before you hit the ground, as close to the ground as you feel comfortable with, uh, click on one of the, the, the left or right thumbsticks and do a lateral boost. If you cl click the right one, you'll do a, a boost to the right. You will not take any fall damage. Now you see that spiral was, was burning and I done that massive jump, done the click, and took no damage because any sort of damage would have destroyed that spiral. Trust me when I say that that is the, you know, I think that's the first time I've got that spiral to the end uh, damaged. Every other time I've got the spiral to the end, it's been absolutely 100%, no damage at all. And even with a damaged spiral, it's still all good. Now, the, the the palindrome I'm using, I got this season, so it has stun and recovery. And you'll see, once I stun this champion, 
uh, I get my health back. I think, I think the maximum it can give you is two thirds of your health, or even three quarters of your health. I'm not sure it will regenerate your complete health. The other thing I will say, we'll do a lot more talking about the strike when we get to the boss, like the, the, the thoughts about the strike, because there's a lot of repetition at the boss, but I'll set up the boss battle when we first get there. Make sure you take these angry, I think, I, I think I've started to refer, refer to them as uh, angry, angry thunder crash titans. They're just angry titans, these little lucent moths. They will one hit you. Uh, and and the reason I, I started trying to work out the... Well, I didn't even have to try and work it out. It was actually really easy. Uh, I got it pretty quickly. and pretty, It's repeatable now. I do it every time with the spiral. Uh, it's because even with Invis, a couple of times, those Lucent Moth followed me and killed me while I was invisible. So I was like, ah, no, nah, I'm not hearing that anymore. We're, we're going to find a way to get past this. Uh... So yeah, when you get here, make sure you take out the Lucent Moths. The, the, I spent about an hour and a half, maybe maybe two hours max. And if I was being, even even if I was being really liberal with it, I'd say three hours max doing the GM. And on my fourth attempt, I got here. And was like, oh, I don't know what the fuss is about, pretty easy. And a lucent moth was hiding at the top right hand corner of this cave. I didn't see it. Because there's always one in, you know, on this slope that we're on, there's always one. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. And, it, and he killed me, and it was the only time I got here. After that, the game would not let me get here. For however long. Two and a half hours. So after that one day of attempts, I was like. Do I really need to do that? Because I wasn't having any fun with it because it's not repeatable. Which brings me to my next point. Now, obviously, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really speaking about what I'm doing here too much. I want to take these blighted gravekeepers out first. The reason why I'm shooting the, the shriekers is because if I kill the shriekers, a la cool disappears. The shriekers seem to be his thing. But you need the the scorn ogre to still be up which is why I kill the blighted gravekeepers first because they're the ones that are really going to destroy him but they'd already killed him before I got a chance uh, if that if, if the scorns stay up the shriekers will still keep shooting and you can kill both the shriekers and save some heavy but it is what it is the idea is to defeat the lucent hive so the lucent hive don't include the shriekers the lucent hive are basically uh, those ogres uh, I'm not... I think this this unstoppable counts as as uh, one of the Lucent Hive. You've got an Arc Knight who counts as Lucent Hive. Uh, there we go. That's the last Hive. I, those uh, those uh, Screebs that came up, they uh, dropped a heavy brick up there that I want. And there's another one over here. So I'm going to... You'll nearly always get to the boss with full heavy. So the two... Two acolytes that were up by the Shriekers, the Arc Knight, the two big blighted Gravekeepers, and the Unstoppable are what qualify or what class as Lucent Hive. Kill them and you can come in here. Shoot the boss to get rid of him. Now, I'll set up the boss fight so I can reference it as I'm going. When you drop down, he's going to appear. The Light Blade, LL Cool J, is going to appear. What's going to happen, you can see, it's going to rain uh, motes of light. Now, because we used our super on the Blighted Gravekeepers, we're going to collect some of those, and uh, we're going to collect some of those, and that gives us what super to use against them. The first ad you're going to you're going to get is going to be the boss, and you're going to get a whole bunch of thrall. Once you get him to half health, you are going to get another bunch of thrall to the same degree as the ones that you already killed at the end of his first health bar he will come up here and go into what i commonly refer to as boss's cocoon phases he will cocoon meaning he is immune and we will get a light a, a light bearer a lucent hive uh and we will get 
two light bearers disciples which are basically arc shielded knights that is what we will get you see there if you just notice to the right of the screen uh we have we have our thrall but what happened was and and stuff like this happens i'm just going to go and collect any of the other uh there they are motes of light that are on the floor just to help me get my super back asap because every time i think i think he drops those more off you know he does drop them relatively often i'll put my grenade down if he does what he just done there don't don't try and, and do the juking thing don't jump from platform to platform change position because he now is in fight mode so he won't keep jumping he'll he'll start shooting and you will die so that's us had our second lot of thrall when we take his first health bar down obviously we're going to get those two arc shielded knights the the light bearers disciples and we're going to get a light bearer once we kill all of those ads those three he's going to become active again and we're also going to get our our first wave of barrier champions that is at the end of his first health bar once you've killed the the, the light bearer and the two arc shielded knights once you kill the champions it's you and him right when you get half of his health down you are going to get another lot of barrier champions and acolytes once you've killed them and then you, you go back to doing this so this so phase one that's the best way to do it. Phase one is what we're in now. So uh, we haven't had any heavy duty ads. We just had two waves of thrall. And the boss has still got his helm. When he goes to his cocoon phase. That is for me. The Lucent, the Lucent Hive. And the, the Arc Knights. Are the end of phase one. The start of phase two. So this is the end of phase one. There we go. We've got the Lucent. The Light bit bear, The the light blades warrior listen hive now he's finishable we're going to go up and finish him but we've got to be careful because we've got those two arc knights somewhere there they are and they're going to get a hit on me luckily because he's a heavy duty ad you see me regenerating my health there uh because he's a heavy duty ad i was almost guaranteed to get uh an attrition font of light to give me health back which gives you constant health regeneration for a couple of seconds so we're still at the end of phase the first phase i'm positioning myself over here so this is uh as you come into the room i think this is like the top right of the room just get him finishable because and you see here i'm just gonna finish him gotta be careful with finishing these things as well because <clears throat> you'll finish them sometimes and they, they'll still try and make it out that they hit you with the sword this is the end of phase one you kill this disciple and that starts phase two you'll get a wave of barriers and acolytes and the boss becomes active again now the reason why i want this light bearer to come over here is normally you see i finished them and it said no we've got hit normally i can hit him and we're all good he doesn't push it it's just luck of the draw there's you know it's it's frustrating that it can change to suit itself i have done this a few times where i've just been able to take that champion straight away this time i fire and he's like no nope. spider-man jumping all the way across so again it doesn't change the fact we are at the start of phase two. What's going to happen in this phase? We've got this group of barriers. We'll take the barriers and the acolytes. I, I, I try to take the acolytes first and it just leaves me up with the barriers, but it's not always feasible. And then once you get them to half health, you'll get another wave of barriers. Exactly the same as this wave, except on the second wave, which is you're at the halfway point of the boss fight, the boss gets aggroed. He loses his helm, exactly the same as it worked in the Dark Blade Strike. Uh, he loses his helm and becomes super agitated, right? 
at the moment he's still pretty chill when he loses his helmet man you you've just got to stick and move because it ain't he's like he's like twitching for the whole thing he's like i heard something i'm pretty sure i'm just going over there to check it out and he will take the shortest distance towards you so now this champion's jumped over i managed to get a crit which i was hoping that if i got a crit uh he would he would come hunting me uh, he would turn around, sorry, that champion would turn around, but I knew the light blade would hunt me the minute I done it. So that's why I, I was trying to wait till I had some invisibility. I'm just trying to push this this uh, acolyte over with me so that I can do that and get more invis and get out of there. It's a great thing you can utilize these acolytes. You know, it's not a clever thing really, it's just u utilitarian. You can, you can utilize them for more invis. Uh, now, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find out where the boss is because you can be guaranteed the minute I go after the champion, the boss will appear out of nowhere. I don't know where he is. Dodge, I'm just trying to keep... There he is. So now if I stay in cover from him... Uh, I had said to go because there was, there, there was a couple of couple of acolytes as well i'm gonna throw that i'm still in cover from the boss although the boss will come over to investigate but it's all good because now i've got my dodge you see there he was coming over to investigate but he didn't actually know where i was the smoke gives him a better idea i'm just looking you see how he's jumped down but he's jumped down but he's he's still targeting me there's no real the boss is gonna let you the boss won't let you do a damn thing he won't let you do anything. He will perform the same way all the time. You know, I'm trying not to take any risks because I want this to be repeatable, which is why it's a long, it's a long strike. Because you know, if if you fly by the seat of your pants, I, I and I, and I applaud people that do it. But if you fly by the seat of your pants, you run the risk of dying, and I don't know if that makes for a repeatable run. Just keep my eye on him. See, he's coming over. He knows I'm here. So does the champion. You know? They're, 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 they're really, really... And it seems like the champions get more aggressive uh, when he becomes aggressive. What I'm basically trying to do here is wait for the boss to leave the champion, the champion to look at me, and then me to kill the champion. Goes without saying, right? See? So he's looking at me even though I'm in this. Right? But I think that's his thing. I, I'm, I'm not... I don't think this was any... This was more... Uh, I don't think this was... You know, oh, he doesn't normally do this. I think he always does that. So now, I'm looking to see when my map turns kind of deep red. I knew it would come up. Now, the great thing... The only predictable thing about his movement is... He'll always jump up either on one of those alcove pieces or he'll jump up at the e end of of the, the platform. He won't jump inside one of the, the alcove, these kind of archways. He'll jump on one of the one of either the, the, the balconies or at the end. So at least you know if you're midway, he's not gonna jump on you. So I'll get my super two shots on him, it's lovely. And uh, there goes his helmet. The minute his helmet goes, next set of barriers. And then we're right back to rinse and repeat. Uh, we're going to tr try and take out some some of the... the. We'll get the finisher here. Be opportunist. Go from invis to invis. Kind of... We'll be in, in here. Let's see if, how many... Throw that. We've got the dodge. I just want to see how many acolytes were there before I threw the grenade to see if we could at least get a couple of kills with the grenade. We've got one, but I think we got maybe another acolyte low, which will be cool. Because uh, if we can get one low, we can maybe use it for an invis, an invis marker. So no, no, I've still got my invis. We're gonna have a look. Yep, we got, we got. There's two lowish. I'll dodge and now I'll get out of here. So time-wise, it's a 42-minute run. Uh, seems pretty long until you take into consideration 
Uh, if you do, if you do the math, the basis between normally the basis between GMs and masters. So if you take the the the, the if you take the last glassway that I done, the master was like forty two minutes or something, and the GM was about I think it was just about an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and twenty odd minutes, which was the average time for that GM. The average time for this GM is about an hour and 25 minutes. Solo GM, I've seen longer ones. I've seen mm, a couple quicker. So 40 minutes is about right. Right? Uh, it's just about being safe. And, and, and I'm going to try something at the boss. I'm going to try... Because... So this is us in Wave 2. This is our last set of champions in Wave 2. When wave three, wave three will will, will kind of go a similar way to the way wave two went. Uh, he will go into a cocoon phase. We'll get a a, a lucent hive, two light bearers disciples. But when we kill them, we won't get a wave of champions. We'll get a wave of thrall. Now I actually forgot that. Caught up in the moment. You'll see me. It's just part of this repeatable strategy, Malaki. Uh, I try and lead the light bearers over to the left hand side so that I can take out a champion straight away. Even though it didn't work this time, it always works. Apart for the time I do it. <laughs> it always works. So so I don't know if, if, if you're just in the background in, in the gameplay if you're noticing that even though I'm not engaging him and I'm not showing myself, he's still shooting in my direction. The reason he's doing that is because I'm doing the quick fall. So he can hear me activate the smoke, but he can't hear me activate my dodge. So there he is. I'm going to smoke again. Now, he's not chasing me. That that This is the crazy thing about this, the, the way that this boss works. To say he never came to chase me because he didn't know where I was. But when I smoked... He shot at my location, but never came over. There's so much about this strike I don't like. There's a lo we're going to take this, going to take this champion now. He's 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 good for it. And there comes there comes Light Blade. Too late, buddy. You left your champion unattended. He's mine now. So that's the champions. It's not about being opportunist, like I was obviously, you know having a laugh by saying that it's not about being opportun opportunistic what it's about is making sure the champion's facing you so you can get the three crits and that light blade isn't standing right behind them and that would seem pretty simple i mean it, it, it's not rocket science to get that oh my god the amount of times that the champions will just like mr light blade can we hold your hand we is scared of this Obviously not dark place. They, they just run with them. But uh, we were pretty lucky in, in, in the respects with this one. So now we'll smoke. smoke the smoking thing, I, even go, even thinking about it, the, the quick fall, I probably would have been better with a double dodge. With the speed I was getting my dodge back, a double dodge, it probably would have been better because relying on the smoke, it's not, it, it's, it's not so good. So... The Acolytes are down, it's just me and him. I haven't got my supper yet, so uh, I don't know what I was doing there. So, I think I'm missing with one of these, because I went too far forward. Yep. So, basically lead him on a merry chase until we get him to his cocoon phase, and then we enter wave 3. Wave 3 starts the same way as wave 2 does. Uh, well, sorry, end of wave 2 starts the same way as the end of wave 1 did. We'll get a Lucent Hive and, as I've already said, two Arc Shielded Knights. And, uh, but we don't get champions once we've done that. I think we get Thrall. And then once we get halfway through his third health bar, then we get the champions and we get Thrall. So the kind of wave 1 is a mixture of uh, wave 1 and 2. You know, getting the champions halfway through, getting the thrall halfway through. Uh, you only get, so basically you only get the Lucent Hive 
at the end of the, uh, in the cocoon phase. Be very wary if he backs away. Now, sometimes he'll do this false thing where he'll jump up here and he'll put his hand up like he's going to shoot and he doesn't. Don't take the chance. If you think he's going to shoot, dodge and go in viz. Don't panic if he jumps over here. As you've seen there, you've done it with me. It doesn't mean anything. So watch out because... Oh, man. I said ages ago, I remember having a conversation with somebody where they were saying that uh, the... The Blade Barrage uh, Hunter Acolyte was the worst champion. And I was like, do me a favour. Sentinel is, he's got too much. Now, I was doing this, where are we now? Sort of being about Wednesday I was doing this. And I was under the impression that the, the Sentinel Knight's Super consisted of basically four four shots with with the shield uh, which is cool four shots with the shield and they 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 could throw two suppressor grenades per kind of rotation if you like oh no that's not the way it works I was doing this I think Wednesday and one of them threw four suppressor grenades at me and the fourth one killed me because I did, I was like, three? What are you on about? But he's out now, so it'll be super next. No, I've got one more for you. The biggest problem with Lightblade, and I'm going to say this as my kind of, not final thoughts because we haven't done the finish the strike yet, but but as like a summary, I, I it's not that I don't like the strike. I don't like its place within Masters and Grandmasters. I think it's, it, there's too much... Uh, it's a confused strike because it's operating on the principles of the legendary campaign and I think man, I know when they brought Glassway and they brought in Wyverns, that was the big bad and that's all you get, you know you, you only get them in there and this is the, these uh, these uh, what do you call it these uh, light bearers they are uh the new Wyverns, right? That is basically what they are. The new version of the Wyvern. And we all hated the Wyverns, and we still do. Now we hate these, but... I, I, the Wyverns had, like, basically... They'd done the Vex thing. They could teleport and all the rest of it. Uh, but they had one attack. They'd stomp you, but they had one attack. And that attack was to fire streams of void at you uh, that, you know, really burn me. I mean, they, they, they really hurt. But they operated in the exact same fashion. Uh, I got smacked there, but because I picked up uh, a font of light, well, didn't really even touch me. There's a couple of thralls still up, so just try and take them out. Again, when he goes down the bottom, just be careful because he will shoot. He will shoot. If he backs away, he will shoot. So, we got, we got that. The minute you see the throw coming out, you're going to get your next wave of champions. What I'm going to do, just before I finish what, I'm, what I was talking about, we'll <laughs> talk about the strike. Uh, what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to get a shot on each of these champions. I'm going to let my super come back. And then just... I'm not even going to bother killing the two champions. Uh, I've just I've got my grenade here. I'll throw it on these adds. And that should kill all the thrall. Do a bit of damage to him as well. <clears throat> but I'm just going to put enough damage that it takes the health bar down a little bit. But not enough to make them uh, regenerate and put their shields up. And then I'm going to hopefully get my super out, do a bit of damage, get some pot shots off at the boss during this this phase, and then kill him with my super. Uh, while rotating around the map. I'm not even, I'm not going to try and clear the acolytes too much. You know, if I get the chance, I'll, uh, you know, I'll kill one, but... So you can see that champion's isolated, so I'm going to put three shots on that champion, which is enough to bring his shield down. And then we'll do the same there. But right, that's both champions 
bit of damage on them. Now it's about taking pot shots at the boss while rotating uh, and just letting my super come back and then we'll kill him. So yeah, the, the wyverns operated in the same way the Vex did. The light bearers operate uh, in a way that champions don't even operate. I think it's very confusing to have champions and the light bearers in the same strike. And the reason for that is the light bearers actually supersede the damage that the champions can do. Now the wyvern's done that to a degree, right? But the what I mean the wyverns eh, you could you could say they were better, you could say they were worse. They're red bars with, you know, nearly as much health as a champion. Uh, these light bearers have got more health than a champion. I can three shot a champion. I can three shot a barrier champion. Alright. I can three shot it, but he won't put a shield up. He he'll just die. I'm four four to five shots on a light bearer. So for me that's you know it's confusing it's confusing and it's bad enough. And I don't want to keep talking about this video, man, but just try to get runs done and do other stuff. Keep putting it off and putting it off. This is the weekend. You mark my words. Don't believe me. Believe it when you see it. This is going to be the weekend for the Nightfall video because we need to have a talk about this because... And I'm just going to preface this video right now. I don't remember... Well, I do, but... It's been a long time since I felt this disillusioned with the Nightfall uh, ecosystem. And I, I, it has been a long time. It's been August 2020. I made a video, I'd done all the editing, I'd done all the commentary, It just, I'd uploaded it. All it needed to, for me to do is press uh, make it public. And that video would be on my channel. And I, I held back, I, I went, okay, two months till, you know, six weeks, whatever, two months until Shadowkeep. Let's see what Shadowkeep brings before I go running my mouth off, making it sound like I'm being salty. And you guys know I'm very, really salty. I'm logical. I try to be logical about everything. If I don't like something, there is a logical reason. I'm, I don't stamp my feet and go, eh, I don't like it. Uh, I've got kids. Why would I be doing that? I try and think, well, there's reasons for this. And there are reasons for why Night Falls... The GM scene, the Nightfall scene, there's something not right about it. We're missing something. I think it from... Uh, could have died there. Could have very easily died there. I think that's the first time in this whole strike, maybe. There's been other times I've been hit and been like, oh boy. I think that's the first time I could have actually died. And you can see how quickly you get your health back as well. And I think that's to do with... Uh, Graviton forfeit, maybe. Uh, I'll just, I, I just threw my grenade over there, just to see if I could get a pick on some enemies and just try and get a bit more super energy and move the enemies around and just basically be an annoyance. So we'll, we'll get a small calm. Yeah, the, the, I, I feel, I don't feel like I'm not going to say light blade is, you know, I, I have already said it because I, I don't actually like the strike, but I don't. It's not because this isn't wretched eye. I didn't like Wretched Eye because Wretched Eye just... Oh no, actually, this is Wretched Eye. Because it was the same thing with Wretched Eye. It just felt off. It just didn't feel like a Destiny 2 strike. This does not feel like a strike. It feels like, it feels like what they've done is... All the other strikes are at like 7 or 8. Let's put this one at 11. And I don't like that. Because I like continuity. I like to... Right, well, we know we know what we've got here. What's the strategies? Let's have some fun with it. What can we do? Light Blade is like, nah. And I, 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 I personally don't like that. Well, there's the run. That was the third wave. I, didn't, I just put a little bit of damage on the two champions. And we just waited for the super. If in a different world, a better world, I would have left some motes of light if I... If I'd had any pre-planning, that's what I was going to do. But I actually done that off the cuff and went, I'm going to see if this works. And it did. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. There will be that small video detailing, the, being, going into more detail about the spiral coming up.
But until then, you guys stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.